Hi, my name is Island Hansel. I'm currently a fourth year gastroenterology fellow at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. I am pleased on behalf of my co-authors to discuss our manuscript recently published in CGH titled Incidence and Determinants of Hepatocellular Carcinoma in Autoimmune Hepatitis, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. The rising incidence of hepatocellular carcinoma and low five-year survival rates have made hepatocellular carcinoma one of the fastest growing causes of cancer-related death. As a result, hepatocellular carcinoma surveillance is recommended in high-risk populations. Autoimmune hepatitis with cirrhosis has been associated with an increased risk for hepatocellular carcinoma. However, this risk estimate has varied widely among cohort studies, and there has not been a systematic effort to evaluate this risk. Therefore, we performed a systematic review and meta-analysis to estimate the incidence of hepatocellular carcinoma in patients with autoimmune hepatitis and examine additional factors that may be associated with this risk. We performed the study in accordance with PRISMA and MOOSE guidelines with an a priori study protocol. We used random effects models to estimate pooled incidence rates for all patients with autoimmune hepatitis and in several subgroups. A total of 25 studies involving 6,425 patients with autoimmune hepatitis met our inclusion criteria and were included in the meta-analysis. 80% of patients were women. Cohort sizes ranged from 1,721 patients with a median cohort size of 170 patients. The average follow-up times range from 3 to 16 years, with a median follow-up time of 8 years. At the time of their initial diagnosis with autoimmune hepatitis, approximately 1 in 3 patients had already progressed to cirrhosis. Among all patients with autoimmune hepatitis, the pooled hepatocellular carcinoma incidence rate was low, at 3 per 1,000 person years. The pooled hepatocellular carcinoma incidence rate was much higher in patients with cirrhosis at a rate of 10 per 1,000 person years. Furthermore, almost all patients with hepatocellular carcinoma had progressed to cirrhosis at the time of their diagnosis with hepatocellular carcinoma. Taken together, this shows that cirrhosis is the predominant risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma in this population. We also found hepatocellular carcinoma incidence rates varied according to the source population used. Studies using single tertiary center data found much higher rates of hepatocellular carcinoma compared to studies using multiple centers or country data. This may reflect an increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma in patients with more complicated or severe disease that are generally seen at these tertiary care centers. Additionally, we found the hepatocellular carcinoma incidence rate was much higher in men compared to women. This difference was not statistically significant and was likely impacted by sample size. Finally, a total of five studies used multivariable regression analysis to identify factors associated with the development of hepatocellular carcinoma in patients with autoimmune hepatitis. These studies identified cirrhosis, male gender, older age, multiple autoimmune hepatitis relapses, and alcohol use as independent factors associated with an increased risk for hepatocellular carcinoma. In conclusion, patients with autoimmune hepatitis-related cirrhosis are at an increased risk for hepatocellular carcinoma, and surveillance for hepatocellular carcinoma may be cost-effective in this population. This work has important implications, and we would like to thank the AGA for this opportunity to share our work. Thank you.